I hear there's a woman in this hotel known as the Grey Lady. I had one of the strangest encounters imaginable while testing for EVPs in the basement bathroom. Who is this? What happened when we were in the ballroom is literally the pinnacle of what we do this for. Oh, she did. Somebody here with us right now? Everything from there started going crazy. Empty. Saloran. Bro. Bell. The Lafayette Hotel was very strange. What started as a slow night quickly developed into something much deeper. Apparently this place is well known for paranormal encounters ranging from people seeing full body apparitions, items being triggered on command, voices, just a lot of weird things happening in there that can't be explained. During the first hour and a half of being there, all we were getting was these random things coming through on the ovulus, nothing that really made much sense. And it was kind of so uneventful that I felt like it wasn't even really watch worthy for the viewers. But that's when things got a little bit weird. weird, weird. It says we band, release, and jam. <laughs> release and jam. All right, see you guys in a little bit. Fuck. You're getting a lot of readings over here, huh? Threat, coins. Threat, coins? Somebody threaten you for some coins? Oh, this room's kind of creepy. Preacher. I'm just gonna sit right here. That's all right with you. Oh. All right, that was like a pipe starting or something. If there's anybody here that would like to talk, I have a device. You can say anything through that if you like. I can even leave it here for you to communicate when I come back if you want to leave some words on that. Let me see what you got to say.
I'll leave it for a minute and I'll check out the rest of the place. Feel free to come over here and give us any words on that device if you'd like. I hear there's a woman in this hotel known as the Grey Lady and she's supposed to be very, very beautiful. Would you be able to show yourself to me? Can you say hello? To me and my guys? I had one of the strangest encounters imaginable while testing for EVPs in the basement bathroom. I was sitting in complete darkness doing my testing. I heard footsteps approaching the door and I heard somebody or something slowly open the door to the bathroom. Yo. Who is this? Oh, we paid to have access. Oh. Yeah, we're filming and our equipment's all over there, so people aren't supposed to be down here. Tanner radioed us during our split investigation and told us that we needed to check the equipment because there was someone else down in the basement with us. I couldn't really see who it was. At first I thought it was Casey or Colton because no one had access to that part of the building while we were down there. But then I realized it was an elderly man and he was asking me what I was doing down there. Who is this? Oh, we paid to have access. At the time, I honestly wasn't thinking anything paranormal. I was honestly kind of pissed that somebody was interrupting our investigation, and for whatever reason, his voice just wasn't in the recording. Yeah. We're filming and our equipment's all over there, so people aren't supposed to be down here. He wasn't whispering or talking quietly. He's talking like I'm talking right now until we looked back at the footage later, and it looked like I was having a conversation with myself. Yeah, we're filming and our equipment's all over there, so people aren't supposed to be down here. We maxed out the volume, we played it in slow motion, we did everything that we could to try and hear this other person that Tanner was speaking to, and we got nothing. Who is this? Oh, we paid to have access. Yeah, we're filming and our equipment's all over there, so. I've known Tanner my whole life. He would never make something up like that. So we did an entire sweep of the downstairs area, nothing. We even went upstairs and checked with the security to see if anyone had gone into the building. They said we were the last ones to go in there. It doesn't make any sense that there's no audio of the person he was talking to, but that's one of those things that made us look at each other and say, what the hell just happened? The only reason I for sure know that the door opened is because there's an exit sign right outside the door and I saw the red glow come through the open door. You can even see it on the static cameras. So I know for a fact that that door opened. Typically when we go on these investigations, we go from location to location without getting too much sleep. 
and it wouldn't be a surprise if one of us was in a dark room by ourselves, not getting much responses for a while, and maybe you start to doze off, or maybe you, you're in a dreamlike state, but that red light shining in proved that he was in fact seeing what he saw. Someone besides us was definitely present with Tanner for a brief moment in the basement. When I was down there, I heard his voice clear as day, and there's just no reasonable explanation as to why his voice wouldn't be in the recording. Other teams have mentioned an old man's apparition that shows up in the basement, and some even claim to have had conversations with it. Whoever or whatever that was Tanner saw, I'm starting to think was an actual apparition. I still don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense, but stranger things have happened on investigations. Who is this? Oh, we paid to have access. Oh. Yeah. We're filming and our equipment's all over there, so people aren't supposed to be down here. Next, we decided to set up the Yes No Prism in the back corner of the hotel restaurant. And this particular booth was said to be a booth where mobsters would frequent often. They would have meetings there and apparently a few of these mobsters died within the hotel. So they believe that the spirits of these mobsters still visit that particular booth. And we thought that maybe it would be a good idea to set up our tests in that actual section. So, she said this back booth was the mafia section? Yeah, the hot spot. So we could try some tests over here. Yeah. Oh, it's like a heavy presence in here, kind of, right? Yeah, it's nice to hold. Like, the closer you get this way, you can feel kind of weird. More pressure. Yeah. All right, um, I'll grab the, you wanna try yes, no prism first? Yeah. See how that does? Got all our stuff over here. So this is a yes, no prism. It has lights on both sides of it. If you light it up on the left side, all you have to do is come close to it and it'll light up green, which will mean yes. And if you come close to the right side, it'll light up red, which will mean no. Can you please communicate with us by coming close to the device and letting us know that you're here with us right now? We also have an EMF detector on the other side of the restaurant. That way, if you're not comfortable coming close to us, you can go close to that device over on that side and it'll let us know that you're there. We're not here to harm you, we just want to communicate. You guys hear that in the corner over there? Hello? Footsteps actually like sliding. Somebody here with us right now? Can you let yourself be known? When we were asking questions in the restaurant, the EMF detector, which we had put on the stage all the way on the opposite side, started spiking. Can you come over here and talk to us? Is that a no? If you can come over here and do that same thing, green for yes. Was that that thing? What was that? That was that thing. Was it? But it didn't light up. 
That sounded like a walkie. If you can come over here and do that same thing, green for yes. Was that that thing? What was that? That was that thing. Was it? But it didn't light up. That sounded like a walkie. Oh, I got a walkie in my pocket. I do too. Make sure that what noises are making all that. I well, that was full when we had it a little while ago. Maybe you just got an energy drain. Oh, what the Maybe. fuck? I, I literally charged those overnight. Yeah, mine's still full. Yours yeah. should not be dead. I know a battery being low might not seem like a big deal to the viewers, but when you walk in somewhere and you know that everything that you have is fully charged, the radio battery that's supposed to take days to die is all of a sudden drained. That's a trip. We just turned this off. This is the used it twice. Yeah, this, this is, is the this mafia is the corner. corner. Yeah. Are you targeting so me? All of his entourage would be around him right now. You're probably sitting in that exact spot where he would be. Oh, knock over there too. There's a knock over there and then the EMS starts going off. It seemed like there was items being triggered on the opposite side of where the booth was, maybe to get us up out of the booth, I really don't know. Ultimately, we decided to go to where the EMF detector was getting spikes at, and sure enough, we started to get some answers. So we came over to where you were. Can you go near our prism? Weak? Huh. Why are you weak? Have you spent a lot of energy? Listen. Was that not enough energy that you got from the walkie talkie? Oh, that's no uh, green. Hmm. Huh. Answer the question you asked if that camera's recording. I said yes. Why did you? Was it that or was it the one I just asked? I don't know. Is whoever made the EMF detector go off earlier? Here with us now? On the stage? Okay. We are. Is there more than one of you? If there's more than one of you, can you please light that prism up green? You've already done it once. Shot a ballroom? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it's green. You want us to go to the ballroom? Light it up green if you're, if you're gonna communicate with us stronger there. While we're in the restaurant at one point, we're using the yes, no prism. We asked if the entity wanted us to move to the ballroom and it lit up green. That meant yes, so we moved on over to the ballroom. We were told that the ballroom was famous for items being triggered. And personally, I found that very intriguing. So when we went into the ballroom, we wanted to set up a different kind of a test and see if whatever spirit or entity is present that people are claiming they're having communication with, can that spirit actually trigger items individually? So we set up three EMF detectors across three tables throughout the room and we started asking questions. So we have three EMF detectors set up right now in front of us and we were told that spirits in this room like to play with equipment. The spirits in this room have turned flashlights off in the past, triggered EMF detectors on command. So can you please come close to any one of these three tables and let us know that you're here with us now. There's also a device over there it's pretty much like an ovulus inside of a teddy bear. If you come close to that, you can tell us a phrase or something that you want to tell us. Feel free to come communicate with us. We're not here to harm you. We were told this is a very active room. Do you want to prove that to us? Good. 
going to use the energy from any of our devices to light up one of these EMF detectors. First we heard a very slight whisper behind us and then it seemed like everything from there started going crazy. Like this. Whoa, shit. Dude. It just like went all surreal. Oh, wait, wait. oh shit. Dude. It's a can you finish that wow. sound? What happened when we were in the ballroom is literally the pinnacle of what we do this for. It was one after another after another and it was like each item was just being triggered in such an order that it actually seemed like something was moving across the room. Oh shit. So the bear says, can you finish this? And then makes a tapping noise. The bangs that followed the bear's phrase had some like base to it. It almost sounded like it came from the wall in the adjacent room to us. We need to build up on the other side of this wall. Because if there's no on the other side of this room, it's fucking insane. Empty. Nobody. What the fuck? When the EMF detectors first went off, it was a huge adrenaline rush just based on the simple fact that they all went off simultaneously, seemingly on command. It wasn't that. It was way louder than that. Yeah, that's crazy. It that wasn't that. Sound like it was something like that. It, it wasn't just kind of between them, honestly. Yeah, it was kind of between them. Can we ask a couple more questions? Yeah. Try to move to one of the rooms? That was awesome. That was sick. If you can do that again on any one of these tables, we would be so happy with you. Can you move back across the room one time? Are you? Oh shit, dude. On the I can't believe that. That is insane. Can you move back across the room one time? What are you? Oh shit, dude. Oh, I'm I can't believe that. If you enjoy communicating with the living, can you like that last table up over there? The fact that we were able to ask it, can you please do it again, and got another response. And to be able to get it on camera, it's honestly incredible. From the perspective of a paranormal investigator, you really can't ask for much more. We're looking for proof of an afterlife. A lot of the times we don't get much. And when something moves past you like that on an investigation, it's honestly incredible. It's something that is special. Stop. Dude, I literally said, can you go back? I gotta review that. Energy's erratic. Clink, clink, clink. Whoa. After getting the EMF readings in the ballroom, we were super pumped to get more readings. So we pulled out everything and we did a series of other tests. We tried solo tests. We pulled literally all of the equipment out. It's really strange the way these things happen in investigations sometimes. You know, we'll be getting a lot of activity, a lot of direct communication, and then seemingly out of nowhere, it just stops. No one really knows or understands how the afterlife works or how spirits can use their energy, but it seems like sometimes they use their energy in a strong burst to show their presence, and then they disappear. Of course, it is a bit disappointing to go from high levels of communication to basically silence, but between 
the activity we got in the restaurant with the Yes No Prism, the ballroom EMF, and then the communication I had with whoever or whatever that was in the basement, I'd say that this investigation was well worth it. The investigation the entire time didn't feel hostile, but it definitely felt uncomfortable. Whenever you're in an incredibly old building like this and people have lost their lives there and weird shit's happened there, you're gonna get a lot of activity, especially in a place like this where it's been proven by multiple teams of investigators, they always get something. And in our experience, we got a lot. This hotel at first I thought was kind of a gimmicky tourist type of location. You can go there during the day, you get a day tour, they show you all the areas of the building and tell you all the ghost stories of everything that happened. So in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, cool, this is probably like a tourist trap deal. But after getting the evidence that we got on camera, I think that there was some really solid forms of communication there. Between what I experienced in the basement, which in my opinion is extreme, I mean, I had a full-blown conversation with someone that wasn't there and what we got in the ballroom with the EMFs. We're in there and we have a flood of just electromagnetic activity coming through there. It was unfortunate that it was so much of it. And then it kind of just fizzled off and stopped on us, but still. We don't really know if what Tanner saw in the basement was an apparition or if it was an actual person. Security said nobody was down there with us. Nobody went in after we went in. Nobody came out either. We never saw the man again down there. Sometimes we go to locations like this that are well-known haunted locations and come out with nothing at the end of the day. It, it all depends on whether the spirits want to come out and play. And while we were there, it seemed like they did. The creepiest story that I have of him is that um, the staircase that goes into the lobby is right around this corner. Uh, there was a woman working up at the front desk um, and she was counting her drawer for the night and she looked out into the lobby to see this man um, right at the top of the stairs here in kind of like a leapfrog position, mm. so to speak, staring at her. He was wearing a suit. Uh, of course, it completely freaked her out. She thought she was going to get attacked. She drops the money. Mm. Um, and then, of course, when he sees that he's frightened her, it's like this giant, creepy grin on his face, very Joker-esque, mm. um, is the best way I can describe it. Describe it. Describe it. Keep it moving, y'all.